Now, Lift Your Heels is the story of Irish boxer Jason Quigley's journey to a world title fight and it airs next Thursday, the 10th of March at half past 10 on Virgin Media 2. So that's this day week. It was commissioned by Labrooks. The documentary will also be available to watch on the Virgin Media player and I'm delighted to say Jason Quigley is with us this morning. Jason, welcome back. How are you? Thanks. Yeah, good. The, the decision to allow the cameras in for this in advance of the world title fight, was that a fairly obvious thing for you to do that you wanted to make sure that you had a record and uh, that you were going to be able to get your story across in the build-up to the title fight? Yeah, I think it was... Um, I think, yeah, I think it was a no-brainer, to be honest. You know, I think it was something that... Uh, it's going to be one of the highlights of my, my life, my career, uh, fighting for a world title and uh, to allow the cameras in behind the scenes and uh, to follow my journey and, you know, something that... I'm not so used with is kind of coming into my personal life as well, which was uh, which was interesting for me, and um, yeah, I was uh, I was very welcoming of it, and uh, I really enjoyed it also. We always use the word interesting uh, as like a proxy for a pain in the hole, so because <laughs> 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 in fairness, be honest, you know, it, um, I'm pretty easy going, like you know, so. I just kind of had the crack with it, you know, more than anything. Whenever, whenever the cameras were in and they were asking questions, I just was, as you'll see in the documentary, you know, if anybody that knows me personally will see that I come across the exact same in the documentary as I do just in normal day life. And that's the way that I wanted to be with it. I didn't want to make a wild kick or a fuss about it or try to come across as somebody that I'm not. I wanted to be truthfully honest i wanted to be uh, real and i think that all that came across because i didn't really get nervous when the cameras were around or i didn't really worry too much about it i just i just battered on with the uh, of course my, my my main goal and my main focus was preparing for the world title fight the only difference was there was cameras kind of follow me around bits and pieces um day to day here to there uh in the gym out of the gym cooking the dinner at the house, you know, a few different things like that. But, yeah, it wasn't a pain in the hole. It wasn't. <laughs> um, I, I did I did really enjoy it. And um, I hope it comes across well. Though. <laughs> well I, but I'm sure it does. That's the thing. Like, you've always been incredibly authentic in your dealings with the media. I, I suppose I was talking really about the the painful stuff in your life and actually having to revisit that and speak about that because I know you, you made the decision to talk to Vincent Hogan in the build up to the title fight about your relationship with your dad and, and how that had developed and evolved in the time that you'd been a, a professional fighter and like it's a difficult story you know we, we all all families have uh, difficult aspects to their story and for you to to speak about that uh, must have been difficult and or, or was that, again, just part of growing up and maturing as somebody who's like, oh, look, this is my story, I'm going to tell my story and I'm going to be completely authentic so my supporters know the truth and everybody knows the truth and I am who I am? Yeah, like, um, there's nothing really I do in life that, that I try to hide or anything, you know, I'm a very open, honest person and that's what I wanted to come across, like, on the documentary as well because that's 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 just me, that's just who I am. But I think a professional athlete or any athlete at all that's that's uh, in the middle of their career and you know going through that that real high phase in their career, we don't really have time to sit back and look at how our life kind of panned out. Like it's it's a hundred miles an hour all the time. Like it's one fight to the next. It's you know, when am I fighting? When's training camp start? Everything's just looking ahead, looking ahead and working towards getting something, getting to that world title shot, getting that um, big fight, getting, you know, achieving your goals. Like everything, every single day, every training session is working towards that. We don't really get the time to sit back, pause and to think of what we've come through in life, what, uh, what has happened in our life good the bad the ugly um but i got asked some some very personal questions and i said to myself going into this that i knew that this was probably going to come up and i was going to be honest and yes you know looking back at where I, where i've come from where i've grown up from um the relationships that i've had throughout my career 
you know, even in my, my personal life and my family. Yes, touching base and all that was very difficult. Uh, brought up a lot of uh, emotions, a lot of memories, good and bad. And um, I was kind of, at the end of it, I was relieved and happy that I did go back and sit with all that and that I did kind of confront all that and, you know, try to work my head around it. But it was difficult talking about relationship with my father, you know, looking at the looking at the journey that my, my mother has been on with me and looking also just at the journey my fiance April and our little one Sierra has been on as well. Like because you don't get the time to really sit that stuff that's going on in your everyday life, you don't get that time to sit and look at that. It's just constantly happening. Um and yeah, it it definitely was difficult. It was challenging for sure. Is that totally separate from you as a competitor or is that something that you either have to compartmentalise during your career or actually tap into for motivation during your career? A little bit of everything that you just said. Um, I think, you know, to be a boxer, you kind of have to have a split personality. Um, You need to be able to, like, like, when you get into the ring, if you're a friendly person, you can be a friendly person when you get into the ring. Like it's two lads going in to knock the head of each other. And, you know, you need that, you need that switch where you can uh, change, change person, you know, really. And that's, that's the blunt of it. Like you have to, anybody that knows me and they'll know that I'm a very kind of welcoming person. I chat, I have fun with anybody and whoever. You know, I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be a very shy person. I'd be out there, open and friendly. I think, in a way, other people might have a different opinion. But whenever you get into the ring and whenever you're you're coming face to face to to fighting somebody, um, you have to change that mindset. You have to become more ruthless, more vicious, more uh, more dogged in your uh, in your approach to uh, to the fight, and and then that feeds off into your kind of personal life as well a little bit getting closer to the fight it, the decision to talk about these things is um isn't one that just affects you as well it obviously affects the people you're talking about was there a response from your family to the piece you did with vincent hogan where you spoke about your your relationship with your dad how are things now well we'll find out whenever, <laughs> whenever it's out there on the tv but yeah this this has crossed my mind, you know. I'm I'm hoping that it, it won't cause any any issues or anything like that. There, you know, because I, I just I, I've been honest, and you know, me and my father, we have went through periods where where we talk, where we don't talk, um, and it kind of says in the documentary that don't want to spoil anything, but I, I says in the documentary a little bit on. We're not really talking at the minute, and I think I'm at a stage where I'm not ready to kind of move forward in that relationship or to try and mend things in that relationship right now because it's just too difficult and I'm just getting other parts of my life together and I want to focus and concentrate on that because it has tried to be mended in the past and, and it has been too difficult and too messy. And I'm kind of choosing now to just to uh, to let it sit for another while, and maybe down the line we might come together again and talk, you know, and mend things a bit. But as of right now, I think for the both of us, um, that it that is probably best that it is just uh, just the way that it is, a little bit silent at the minute. Are you okay with that, or is it kind of heartbreaking? It's. Um, it's difficult, like, don't get me wrong. Um, it definitely is difficult because anybody knows my boxing career early on in my career, it has been, uh, my father has been a massive part of my career. He's, uh, well, I was going to say, the first time we ever met you, the two of you were in, in these studios hanging out, thick as thieves, and it just looked yeah. like it was, um, you know, you guys were, were meant for each other, like chip off the old block, real inspiration to each other. I've never seen a, a more proud parent. A hundred percent, like, and... Even though me and my father have fallen out and we don't really speak at the minute, I, I couldn't say a bad word about him. Like you know, um, everything that he has done for me and my career 
has um, has really helped me and molded me to the person that I am today, and I have been forever grateful for that. But then, I think is a lot of sports people will know that when parents are involved with um, the athlete, the the boxer, the footballer, whatever it shall be, things can get complicated. Things can get a bit intense, and you know, me going through my career was. I was a young kid and, you know, you always kind of listen to your father and your father's your idol. And then, you know, I, I start becoming an adult then and I have my own life to live. You know, I have my own, my own family then kind of, you know, a different part of family. And I started living that life as well. And, you know, sometimes that can make things a little bit complicated. And that's kind of where things probably went a wee bit you know, a wee bit rocky then. And I was just growing up, I was starting to become my own person. And I think my father maybe still thought that I was that young child, that a teenager that kind of needed taught everything and needed told everything. Whereas I'm a very disciplined person, train hard, do everything inside and outside the gym correctly. And, uh, you know, there was a little bit of, knocking heads there which it doesn't matter if a son and a father is that close in sport as well as personal life fathers and sons usually always knock heads at some stage but i think because me and my father were so very close it was it was a little bit more of a bigger deal and um as he says of right now you know what i'm very grateful for everything that my father has done for me and um, part of the reason why i'm the person that i am today um, but you know, there was a lot of things that went on as well that might have affected me in a negative way. That um, I'm just not looking to step back into that kind of environment or atmosphere yet until that environment and atmosphere is fixed and, and, and is a lot better than what it was. So as of right now, I need to look after myself and, and, and my family and um, my fiance and our little one you know, that to me is the most important thing right now of being 100% happy, which over the last couple of years I have become massively and so happy in life and so happy with everything going on. And uh, the, my father's situation is such a big, it's a big thing that, yes, I'm probably a little bit afraid to step back and to, to talk about that and to kind of get back into that, not toxic environment, but to get back into that man a challenging environment where emotions and things are kind of a little bit all over the place that isn't balanced but um yeah we have we have a lot of things to work out and i just don't think now is the right time to do that i think maybe future down the line whenever we're uh, a little bit more settled in life yeah and i think um that sounds like a very mature thing to do to get your own house literally and metaphorically in order so that you're able yeah. to deal with whatever emotional trauma is coming 100 percent because was a lot of emotional trauma there and you know as any kid wants to do always wants to please his father and you know you always look up to your father and things like that and that was just something that was was very difficult for me and you know maybe caused a lot of anxiety a lot of stress a lot of pressure on me and um yeah, it was just it, it was it was an environment that wasn't very comfortable for me and that I didn't really enjoy leading more when I came to my twenties, uh, late teens, early twenties, because I was starting to become a man. I was a lot freer. I was living my own life then, whereas I felt still a little bit smothered um, in certain aspects of my life by the coach father situation, not being able to kind of divide that or not be able to separate that. And it was kind of difficult just to have a relationship as a father and son. Um, it was kind of probably wasn't existing at all, that kind of relationship. And that was probably what I wanted more rather than a, than a boxer coach. It, it, this speaks a lot to people's identity as, as sports people. And, and you guys always need to tread that line between living your life, particularly the boxer, where if you lead a lifestyle that prevents you from training as often as you need to train to be ready for whenever the fights arrive, 
then you're not going to be able to do yourself justice. So how do you separate who you are as a man from who you are as a professional and your job? And like it's it's impossible, particularly when you're trying, to, you're striving to make it. If you were to go back, is there any advice you'd give yourself about like having an exterior life to the the boxer that Jason Quigley is? Because that's your business. But then you also just have to have this relationship with your fiance and, and your daughter and your mum and your dad. At some point, you're going to want that relationship. You know, I think anybody, anybody su- successful is a strange word, okay? Because people look at success as in for boxers, world title belts, um, you know, footballers, trophies, uh, signing with these big teams. And, you know, people look at that as success. Whereas to me now, in this stage of my life, my success is happiness, contentment, because anybody that goes and reaches serious heights in their career, inside or out of sport, there is so much heartache, there is so much hard times come along with that. There's so many people out there, you see big business people and, you know, high sports athletes that maybe miss the first couple of years of their child's life, that maybe miss family functions. And yes, these are the sacrifices that you have to make and that we are willing to make to be successful. But there sometimes comes a stage in your career where you're like, what's important to me? What means the most to me now? And you know, all these kind of thoughts and emotions and and stuff is is kind of coming to the surface with me right now. But what you were saying is the loved ones in your life, the family, they do get rejected and left on the shelf a lot whenever you are a high competing elite athlete or a very successful business person because there's so much time away from home. There's so much things that you can't just do and spend quality time. That's one of the things that I take a massive, um, a massive positive from lockdown and the whole COVID situation was the time that I got to spend with my family. Like it was just unbelievable because I never had that before. I never had the peace of mind and the contentment to nothing's happening nothing's coming up i don't unpack in your suitcase to get it packed again to go away there was just a sense of calm a sense of peace a sense of just being in the moment and you know i relished that time with my family and spent so much quality time with them and it just uh it made the world the difference to to my inner peace and happiness and it just I seen the whole relationships blossom as a, as a family. Because I I do remember times when we would talk to you before, and uh, you were in the states, and you were like, oh, you know, I'm I'm looking out the window, and it's sunshine, and there's boats. What's not to like? What's not to be happy? But it did sound a little bit like you were faking it, kind of convincing yourself that this is what happiness and success is supposed to look like. I remember driving down the street in Donegal one time in Bally Buffet and seeing you and you just looked happy. You were like, you know, like you are in your correct environment here. You are fully actualized as a person. What does this mean for your career now? What, like, are you finished? Are you thinking actually now that I've found this peace and contentment, there's going to be a, a second blossoming where I, I go on as a boxer? What, what are you thinking? Well, like for me, anybody that knows, I love Donegal. I love where I come from and, I was essentially probably faking it when I was in LA because not that I was faking it intentionally, I was faking it to myself because I had to tell myself that this is the place for me to be like, you're living in LA, you have an apartment looking over a marina, Venice Beach is your back garden, like meeting celebrities, being in the mix with all the the top professional boxers. If I had told anybody that I'm not really happy living this life or this isn't really for me, people would have thought I was mad and people would have thought I was crazy and being like, how is that? How do you not enjoy that? And maybe that was me thinking that, that that's what they were thinking. But, you know, 
the first six months to a year was unbelievable. It was new, it was fresh, it was it was great. But you know, after that, I kind of did find out that this just doesn't sit with me. This isn't the person that I am. And going on to your question, like, what is what is this for me now? Like, yes, I have found this peace and this happiness and, and, and really enjoying life. But I have been doing that over the last maybe two, three years now. And I have still been boxing, I have still been competing and I have got probably to the the pinnacle of my career or the pinnacle of a career fighting for the world title. The next step is becoming a world champion. But I really enjoyed that journey. I enjoyed that process and I was happy doing that. I'm working with Andy in Dublin majority of the time and then maybe we'll go away for camp whether it's over to Fury's camp so it's something that I have to sit with right now it's something that um, I'm obviously still in the process of recovery with the jaw I just got my uh, plates out two weeks ago so that was another surgery that I had to get done I got two plates in here and here and I got those plates removed which was the exact same surgery but just removing them and I have another bit of recovery and time to heal for that. And then I'll sit down with the team and uh, we'll see what's uh, we'll see what's next down the line for uh, for me and my career. Are you thinking about a life after boxing anyway? Like, are you putting down roots and uh, a security blanket so that the eggs aren't all just in the fighting game for the foreseeable future? Because, you know, you start thinking about kids and your responsibility to them and and your family as you've talked about like you'll have to provide for them after the boxing game is over and you'll want to do stuff on a day-to-day basis because you're obviously clearly an active person so are you thinking about that? Yeah I think um, I finally become an adult I suppose <laughs> once you start thinking like that you, you start realising that, that you're an adult and that you have responsibilities um, but yeah without a doubt you know the last couple of years obviously I knew I was coming to the back end of my career and um, you know I know I live a good clean healthy life and I can go on well into uh, into my 30s of boxing but you know I have been thinking what what comes after boxing you know where what avenues there's probably there's probably a handful of fighters that never have to work or never have to box again financially when they're finished boxing and I mean a handful I mean maybe five fighters that never have to to do a day's work again as an earn money after boxing so every boxer needs to look at what's after boxing um and for me yes i have been looking at it and over the last couple of years you know it was actually jerry hussey that helped me you know start planning that and start realizing that boxing doesn't last forever and you know, start making that separate identity that you're not just Jason Quigley, a boxer, you're Jason Quigley, whatever you want to be. And that really helped me mentally and in my way of, of looking at my life after boxing because since 10 years of age, anybody mentions Jason Quigley, it's, oh, that's the boxer. You know, that is my identity. And that's something scary to walk away from as well because that's all I've known for 20 years. And that's all that people kind of know me for is 20 years. So what I have been thinking and what, firstly, I've been looking, what would I like to do? What would I enjoy? And what what could I give back to the world after after boxing? And anybody, as I, I've been saying, knows I've been on here and I've been talking before about going through hard times, going through dark times. And I'm someone now that is that is at the other side of that. And I'm someone that um, is so grateful and so happy in myself that, that I have come to the other side of that. And, you know, being down in the dumps, being very under the weather and, you know, just not being happy in life is such a scary thing. But it's such a simple thing as well to get over whenever you have the right people talking to you, the right people around you and being in the right environment. And that is something that I'd be very passionate about after boxing is helping people live a good lifestyle, live a happy lifestyle, a healthy lifestyle, keep in shape, eat well, you know, all these simple things. I always thought growing up that 
getting a massive big house, driving a Lamborghini, doing all this kind of stuff would make me happy. But those things only last a short period of time. It's about finding the inner peace and the inner happiness inside of you. And that's something as well that, that Jerry Jose and his wife Miriam have really helped me with over the last couple of years is, is just finding that happiness inside of me. And now I want to be able to give back after boxing to people and help them show them that you don't have to be depressed, you don't have to be upset, you don't have to be anxious about things. Yes, these things are going to continue to keep coming up in life. We're going to be throwing challenges. It's not you're going to be living in cloud nine for the rest of your life. But we're more prepared now to deal with those situations, to, to get through those situations, to manage those situations, and at the end of it, be happy and be proud of yourself for getting over those hurdles and getting to a place in your life that you're happy majority of the time and any any issues or any problems come along that you can deal with those and you can manage those. Uh, teaching people to be resilient is an amazing thing to be able to, to do and your backstory is going to be a brilliant example for you to, to um, pull on whenever you get there. So whatever happens in the ring and out of the ring, there's obviously loads more in this story, Jason. We wish you the very best with it and we're really looking forward to seeing the documentary next week as well. 100%. Thanks for having me on and thanks to my team, uh, Phil at Swish, Swish uh, Films for, for making this documentary, Ladbrokes for putting it all together as well and uh, my family and team and all around me. It's uh, It's been a great journey and as you say, this is uh, the start now maybe of the second chapter of, uh, of the journey but thanks very much for having me on. Well, we'll be there for it as well, Jason. Thanks a million. Cheers. Take care. Oh, cheers. So that documentary airs next Thursday night the 10th of March at half past 10. It's called Lift Your Heels and uh, it's obviously about Jason Quigley's journey to a world title fight on Virgin Media 2. It is 9.42. We went a bit later on that than we were supposed to, but it was definitely worth it. OTBAM is brought to you live each morning by Gillette Labs for an effortless finish to your day.